alchemists, welcome back to our series on our Elixir deep dive. Now, I recently had a project where I needed to use some validations in a contact form, and I thought to myself, hmm, what's a good way to do this? And I thought, okay, actually, Ecto has recently split itself between uh, Ecto uh, core and the database parts. And it really made more sense to use this because, of course, you want to validate it. Say like a user has a proper email that they put in to get contacted by, the message is big enough, etc. And so I'm going to show you guys how to actually use Ecto without a database. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to add actually Ecto to our dependencies. So it's just Ecto. 331 is the latest version at this time. And you run mix steps get to get our dependencies. And I'm going to turn this employee struct into basically an, uh, an ecto struct. And to do that is we use ecto schema to bring in the macro. And we also need to import ecto change set for some of the change set functions. And to create an ecto struct uh, without a database uh, table to the back end, is we just need to use this embedded schema. And we say we have a field of first name, which is a string, field of last name, which is a string. And now we don't need this anymore. We're actually going to get the ID by default. And I'm going to define a chain set function, which takes in the employee and the attributes. Of course, the first thing we need to do is we need to cast those attributes and just allow first name, last name. And then we need to validate that both first name and last name are there. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we go to our work app. And I'm going to add in the, uh, the function, but first I'm going to alias work app employee. Create a function called create employee. It takes in just the attributes. And now I'm going to use a case statement. I'll show you why in a moment. For the chain set function. So of course we have to pass in a blank employee and those attributes. Now what we need to actually uh, use our case statement on is whether or not this chain set is valid, which is quite simple because there is a valid uh, property. So if it is valid, sorry, then what I'm going to do is take that chain set and I'm going to apply those changes which will return the, uh, the struct with all the data attached to it and I'm going to use this little hack because I haven't found a better way to do it to generate a UUID so basically give them an ID employee ID and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to emulate what we usually have with the repo and I'm going to return the an OK tuple with the employee. Now, if it's not valid, of course, it's not valid, right? So in this case, we will return an error tuple with the change set. OK, seems pretty good so far. So let's test this out. So we go to work app, create employee a valid employee first, so first name, test, last name, test. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I forgot the beginning percent sign. Because oh, this is a map. There we go. So we have a valid employee with a, with a username there. Now, if we remove the last name, which we do require if you remember, there we go. We get a error with the chain sets. Now we can actually kind of use this within the UI or wherever we want to use it. So this is Alan from Plangora. 
please subscribe if you haven't. Uh, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to know, uh, or I can dive a little bit deeper on Ecto. It's no problem also. So please subscribe if you haven't, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks. Bye. Hi. Please feel free to ask us any questions about Elixir, Flutter, or anything else in programming. Here's our YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll answer your questions every Friday. Yamantai, Gedak Man Yo Wenti, Jida Wen Wo.